Hi, it's Ray from My Arts Focus. Now in this presentation, I wanna look at a big problem for a lot of students who are doing IELTS, and that is about vocabulary. Now, a lot of students don't have enough vocabulary and they need you know, lists of words, because I get emails from people saying, you know, oh, I need a list of words for band nine vocabulary, or whatever that may mean. Um, and they want me to just send them a list of topic specific vocabulary so they can just put it into the essay. But the thing is, that's very dangerous because if you just memorize words from lists, you probably won't know how to really use those words, or what, in some cases you won't even know what they mean. And then you put those in the essay, the reader, or the examiner in this case, will see this, and they'll actually mark it down, probably a whole band score, you'll get marked down on the coherence and cohesion, and also vocabulary. So it's a very bad idea to just memorize lists of words and then just put them into the essay. There are other techniques for learning vocabulary and there's no real shortcuts to this. It takes time and it takes work. But I'd like to look at this now in the following video. So let's have a look. Okay, so let's take a look at learning new vocabulary. And this is especially for writing and writing task two in the IELTS. Now there's some things to consider about learning new words. I often get asked for topic vocabulary lists for IELTS essays or for IELTS writing and I haven't actually given any of those on my website because you know I believe that the vocabulary building is your responsibility and it's something that you need to work on yourself and there are no shortcuts. It, it takes time to do this. You know you, you, you should never just you know expect a list of words that you can then just put into the essay because if you don't understand the true meaning of those words, it could cause real problems with the essay. So there's no, there's no shortcut, um, but there are certain steps you can take. And as I said before, one of the worst things you could do in IELTS is to just memorize lists of words or sentences, like chunks of sentences, and then randomly put those into the writing. And if you go on the internet or go onto Google and you type in you know, IELTS, vocabulary lists or IELTS band nine word lists, you'll get a lot of websites which, you know, say download this file and you've got a you know band nine list of you know IELTS vocabulary. Well that's not true. There is no such thing as a band nine word list. Okay, that doesn't really exist. You have to you have to build it yourself. You have to work on, on your own vocabulary yourself. Now I've corrected many essays and I've noticed in many of these essays like memorized sentences or memorized phrases where it's clear that the student didn't really know the exact meaning and the thing is the examiner will also see this and you could actually lose a band score because the examiner is looking out for you know memorized language or memorized phrases so it has to be you know your your vocabulary and it has to be used naturally so there are some steps for learning new words. First of all, get a new notebook. And then as you're reading or listening to something, record any new words in the notebook. And I advise picking up about seven new words a day. If you pick up too many words, like more than 10 or 15, you won't actually remember them, you'll just switch off. So keep it simple, just like five to seven words a day is enough really. And of course, you've got to practice by making some example sentences. So practice, practice the words, practice using the words. Write down some synonyms and collocations connected to these words. Now, you may need a dictionary for this, or you may have to go online and look at the synonyms and the collocations that relate to the new words. So you have to kind of do a bit of investigation here as you're learning these new words. So it's a little bit more involved than you know just memorizing lists. And get to know the form of the words. You know, are they adjectives or nouns or gerunds, phrasal verbs or whatever? Uh, collocations that they're very important. I definitely advise working on collocations. And another good thing is to think about word families and prefixes and suffixes. These can change the word formation from, for example, you know, a verb to a noun or verb to a noun adjective. So these are it's very useful to understand how to change the formation of the words. 
and a very important point is to regularly review these new words. It's very easy to forget them. You have to review them and practice again. And if possible, find a teacher in your area that can give you feedback on your writing and pinpoint any mistakes you're making with vocabulary or any vocabulary that doesn't seem to fit well into the writing. So yeah, if possible, get a teacher to help you. Now you're probably look, looking at this and thinking, well, this is going to take forever. It's going to take me too long. I've got my test um, next, next Saturday. Uh, can I just have a list of words? No, it doesn't work like that. You know, that's, that's not a good, good way of seeing it. You've got to change your mindset. And it actually takes, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time to, to build your vocabulary. So you really need, you know, weeks, months, really, to, to build up your vocabulary to above a band seven level. Now there are some study resources. Um, there are some IELTS vocabulary books by Cambridge that you can use and you can practice building your knowledge of IELTS topic specific vocabulary. Um, a good one is um, Cambridge vocabulary for IELTS. You can find it on online at, at Amazon. Um, also if you go to the App Store on Apple's uh, Apple Store, I think there's an app there related to that book. So you can you know, study while you're using your smartphone. And of course you can have a look at my website for free online resources to help with your vocabulary learning. And there's a link here, IELTSFocus.com, IELTS Preparation. Um, I'll actually post the links under this video if you're watching on YouTube. And getting feedback from an IELTS teacher about your essays is very important because they can point out any mistakes you're making with your vocabulary and your grammar, they can give you feedback on your grammar and vocabulary. So find somebody that you trust or someone in your area who can look at your essays or look at your writing and help you on that one. So some advice for learning new words. Well, the best way to learn new vocabulary is to read a lot, read a lot of topics that you find interesting not just doing IELTS reading tasks or practice tests because you'll get bored quite quickly. A lot of students they keep doing practice tests after practice test and they're not really getting anywhere so that you need to really change the way you look at it and find something that you really like, something you really like reading and if it's IELTS related uh, topic, if it's, not, if it's an IELTS related topic then even better. And of course, active listening is a very good way to develop vocabulary. So while you're listening, you're making notes on new words. And there are some good websites for this, like TED Talks. They're, they're very, it's a very good website because there's a lot of presentations and videos. And a lot of the um, topics on the TED Talks website are actually connected to IELTS. Um, BBC Six Minute English, um, Stitcher Podcasts. There's so much stuff out there. You can go to my site ieltsfocus.com, IELTS preparation, and there's actually a list of free online resources to help you with your English. So for example, reading, writing, grammar, vocabulary, and listening, obviously. So learn at least seven new words or phrases a day, but make sure they're IELTS topic specific. For example, crime or the environment, you know, health, family, business, technology, and so on. You know, globalization and government, these kind of topics, they come up in the IELTS um, writing test. Now, this brings me to the next point, which is about synonyms. As you're learning new words, you're going to pick up a lot of synonyms and collocations. Now, synonyms are very useful, obviously, but they can also be quite dangerous. Now, when you start your essay, you must first of all paraphrase the task question. And to do, you, to do this, you can use synonyms, or you could change the word formation, or the sentence structure, or the grammar around. But synonyms are very handy for paraphrasing. However, there's a problem, and the problem is that some synonyms are called near synonyms, and they do not have the same meaning. So you could actually lose a band score in vocabulary if you're not careful, if you're using you know, synonyms that are not exactly the same meaning. Um, you could really ruin the essay, it could ruin the introduction because it gives the, the reader a completely different impression. And now this is a common problem when people are just memorizing word lists 
and then putting the words in the essay. You must understand the meaning 100%, otherwise don't attempt to paraphrase the word. And it's actually not necessary to paraphrase every single word from the task question. In, in some cases you can just copy the word, so you don't have to paraphrase everything. So for example, here we have a synonym list for the word people. It's a very common word in IELTS task questions. Now if you use the wrong word when paraphrasing, it could cause problems of coherence and meaning. Now this is from uh, thesaurus.com. I just went to the website, I typed in the word people, and it gave me this big list of synonyms, and I clicked this checkbox here for a common. Now some of those words, they're just not even related to to the word people, for example, cats, I mean, that's kind of strange. A tribe, um, you know, masses, I mean, as you, as you look at the list and you go further to the right, it becomes even further away from the original meaning of people. Only a few of those words could you really use in an essay, and even then I would be very careful. So it's quite difficult sometimes to actually paraphrase certain words because there are no like very near synonyms, they could be, well not exact synonyms, they could be just near synonyms. So let's take a look at an example. Here we have a task question. Uh, an increasing number of people are buying what they need online. What are the advantages and disadvantages of this? So which of these words do not fit, or which sentence do you think Uh, would be acceptable. Only one of those sentences would be acceptable. Now I've attempted some paraphrasing here, for example an increasing number of, a growing number of, a buying and purchasing, uh, need and require, and uh, online is the internet. So I've done a bit of paraphrasing, but in, in most of those sentences, or nearly all of those, all of those sentences, the word people, the way I've tried to paraphrase people is a little bit strange. So here's the task question again, and the correct answer is I've just kept the word people. So you don't have to paraphrase the word people in this case. In this sentence I haven't paraphrased people because sometimes it can be difficult to quickly think of a good synonym. So you can just keep the word. You know, I could have used the word individuals but, you know, it may be very hard to actually think very quickly of a good paraphrase. And of course you don't have too much time in writing task 2. You only have 40 minutes to write your essay. So you shouldn't really spend too much time obsessing over the introduction. You need that time to focus on the body paragraphs. So the synonyms list we saw earlier shows exa exactly why you shouldn't be just memorizing words and plugging them into the essay. And of course you don't have to change every single word from the task question. You can obviously copy some words. And this is where a lot of people they can lose points because they think they have to change every single word and they have to use a synonym in every single word and it's not really the case. Uh, the next point is collocations. These are really important. So I strongly advise learning how to use collocations and strongly advise there's a collocation there. Um, these are basically two or three words that often go together. They sound just right to a native speaker. So they, they're kind of like chunks of language. Um, for example, here are some very common ones in everyday use. Like uh, have a coffee, have a bath. So you've got have, take, break, follow, spend. Um, you can take a break, take a look, break the law, break a promise. Follow the rules, follow your instincts, and spend money and spend time. That's just a basic example of collocations. Now, um, in the marking criteria in IELTS, you're actually marked on the way you use collocations in the writing section. In fact, here's what it says in the IELTS band descriptors about writing task two and lexical resource for band seven. You can see there in red, an awareness of style and collocation. So this is why collocations are very important. It gives your writing a very natural feel and it shows the examiner that your vocabulary is very good. Now of course there's a lot of rules, grammatical rules to collocations and I haven't got time to go into those. 
but um, you can see that there's a pattern to these. So to summarize, don't memorize lists of words or sentences and then just plug them into your writing. Very bad strategy. Uh, get a notebook and build your own vocabulary resource. And of course there's books online or apps, free online resources that you can use to study IELTS vocabulary. Read things that you find interesting, not just IELTS practice tests. And of course, active listening is very good. It's a great way to get new vocabulary. Learn at least seven new words or phrases a day. Don't learn too many because you'll forget them and your brain will just switch off. So I say about seven is fine. Um, try and make sure they're IELTS topic specific words and collocations, they're very important. And if possible, get feedback from a teacher who can pinpoint grammar and vocabulary issues and give you some advice. So thanks for your time, thanks for watching. If you need any further help, go to IELTSFocus.com. There are some, well, there's quite a lot of free lessons, advice and tips. If you need help with one-to-one uh, -one mock speaking tests, I have that on the website there, there's the link. And if you need your writing corrected, I also have that service on my website. So thanks a lot and thanks for your time.